Hey there. We're going to talk a little bit about some of our heat loving um, favorites here at Earthworks. I'll be talking both uh, some annuals and some perennials mixed in. Uh, first, I'll talk about a couple perennials I have here in front of me. Um, these are uh, native to the southeast. These are not the exact variety that you'll see growing on the sides of the road and in the pastures here across Florida, but the Coreopsis and the Gallardia are both derived from the native varieties uh, that you will see in the wild areas all across the southeast. Uh, they love the sun, they love the heat, the warm colors are fantastic uh, addition to any garden. I really like to mix these warm colors sometimes with blues, purples, it's a nice contrast. So we'll be talking a little bit here about some of our uh, heat loving salvias. They'd be a great addition to mix in with some of the Gallardia and some of the Coreopsis that we carry here throughout the summer. All right, we have a few varieties of lantana. These are not your grandmother's lantana. These are new uh, and improved bunching varieties um, that do not sprawl and spread. Uh, we have the Blumify Red and the Blumify uh, Orange in front of me here right now. They're a nice mounding variety, about a foot and a half or two high and wide, full of flowers all summer long. Um, there aren't a lot of things that are as tried and true as the lantana. I got a honeybee right here in front of me. They do attract pretty much every species of butterfly that I have known to live here in Jacksonville. I've seen every butterfly on lantana. They all love it. Um, they are a continuous bloomer, no deadheading necessary. I do have some other varieties of some trailers right here, so like some of these nice gold varieties. Um, but if you do want something that not only brings in the beneficial pollinators, but does continue to bloom throughout the heat and all the stress um, that we get in the summertime, the lantana is a very good choice. All right, when it comes to heat loving perennials, um, these ground covers here in front of me are some of the toughest ones we have. And being that they're succulent, also um, a couple of the plants that require uh, the least amount of water in our garden. Um, a lot of times we think about perennials, we think about um, interest in the garden, we think about flowers. Um, and although these Aptinia flower, it's not necessarily just the flowers um, that make them interesting, it's their texture. We have this variegated form here with the light color contrast that comes into the garden when we add it. We also have the green variety. And then next to them we have some of the sedum. I have a couple varieties of sedum, sedum here which are very similar, the Angelina, and then I believe this is either the lemon coral. Yep, this is the lemon coral here. Um, just this bright, you know, chartreuse color itself, it brings a lot of interest. The texture of the foliage um, will make great borders, great edges um, in planting areas, but also both of these do very well in containers, uh, spilling over the edges, or just as a standalone can be very dramatic uh, in any pot or container that you have. Um, keep in mind that these are gonna prefer to have full sun uh, so full sun here in Northeast Florida, approximately you know four to six hours minimum and then anything above and beyond that. Although with that said, I have seen these all do pretty well, even in partial sun. So if you don't have the fullest of sun conditions, I would uh, uh, challenge you to try these uh, in less than full sun positions. You're gonna be, uh, be surprised at how well they can do. The caveat to that is just make sure they're not um, lower light areas that also stay moist. We want to make sure that they're dry areas. Uh, they do not tolerate having wet feet. So if you are going to go less than full sun, just make sure that the areas stay dry. And if you're putting them in containers, that they drain very well.